In this lecture, we will study two additional longitudinal stability derivatives, CZU, the Z force change due to longitudinal velocity U, and CZW dot. W dot is a vertical acceleration, so it's the Z force due to um, vertical acceleration change. We first studied the CZU, Z force change due to longitudinal velocity. And we've seen this side view, aircraft side view before. And uh, there are two forces roughly acting on the aircraft, the thrust, lift, and the drag. Um, in cruise condition or level flight, the angle of attack alpha is usually very small. And then since we are looking at the Z force, so the Z force only has uh, one component, which is uh, caused by the uh, lift, and it's, uh, it can be calculated as minus L times cosine alpha. And the alpha is the angle of attack. As we um, have applied many times, uh, we assume the angle of, uh, angle of attack alpha is very small. So the Z force can be calculated as uh, or approximated by minus L. Okay, and we can walk further because uh, the lift can be calculated as CL times half rho V square times S. So now we have the Z. And what we are looking at is the partial Z partial U. And so we just do the derivative and we've already <coughs> know the velocity change, V velocity change, big V velocity change is equivalent to the uh, longitudinal velocity change U. So we can do the derivative and then becomes minus CL times rho V S. And if we find the denominator and the denominator is half rho V S, so eventually CZU is minus 2 CL. So it's a uh, approximation. What's approximation we uh, applied? Small angle of attack. The second uh, derivative we are looking at is CZW dot. The Z for change due to vertical acceleration. Okay, and again we have this side view of the aircraft. And um, before we do the derivation, let's first answer one question. What is wind downwash? So perhaps you are familiar with this uh, downwash in your aircraft design module. Um, now let's anyway let's review it again. And now the aircraft is uh, flying in cruise condition or level flight, and we have um, incoming flow which is. Uh, um, parallel with the longitudinal axis of the aircraft. And if we look at the flow at the trailing edge of the wing, what happens is the, the air flow is guided downward. So this is a called the downwash, what, what downwash is. So the downwash can be defined as a flow at the trailing edge of the aircraft wing is guided downwards in order to generate lift. So this is a downwash, we understand it now. And um, then the question is, what will the downwash do towards the elevator? So in order to answer this question, um, now what we do is we take uh, two cross sections, one from the wing, one from the elevator to investigate the flow, what happens. Okay, so now it's uh, uh, more relevant with aerodynamics. Okay, again, we have a horizontal incoming flow and we have the angle of attack of the wing and similarly, there's angle of attack uh, on the elevator. But we see an additional angle, that's eta t and uh, it's defined as a elevator setting angle because the elevator is not necessarily set at the same angle of attack as the wing. So we have additional angle, eta t, the setting angle. And okay, so now if we look at the flow, 
um, in the gap between the wing and the elevator. So because we have the downwash, and then we have a downwash angle epsilon. So this is what happens actually um, for the wing and the elevator. We've carried out the aerodynamic analysis um, for the flow around the elevator. And because of the existence of the downwash angle epsilon, the angle of attack or effective angle of attack at the elevator is alpha plus eta t minus epsilon. So if we don't have the downwash angle epsilon, then the angle of attack will be alpha plus eta t. But now since always we have this downwash, without downwash we won't get any lift from the wing. So uh, we can conclude that downwash angle reduces the effective angle attack of the elevator. Because of the downwash, the lift on elevator is delayed by time, LT divided by V. So what is LT? LT is the distance between the cent uh, aerodynamic center of the elevator and the center of gravity of the aircraft. And why is that? Because any change in angle of attack will cause the uh, epsilon or downwash angle to change. And that change will also affect the angle of attack of the elevator. But that change is delayed by this amount of time LT divided by V. Because we can assume the downwash velocity is still V. Yeah, and uh, it will travel the distance of LT. That's why it's always delayed if there is a slight angle angle of attack change. Okay, so now we will include the W dot or vertical acceleration. And once the vertical acceleration changes, the vertical velocity will also change. That's for sure. And that a W dot change result will result in the angle of attack change and the angle of attack rate change. So we will consider W dot change is equivalent to the alpha dot change. That's the rationale behind it. And then in the derivation, instead of deriving CW dot, we'll, what we'll derive is CZ alpha dot. So they are equ equivalent terms. Now let's start the derivation. I'm keeping this sketch here and it's because it's very important to understand the downwash effect towards the elevator. Okay. And so we can assume epsilon is a function of alpha and a t. Then we can write down its uh, derivative of epsilon. And it can be calculated this way. And so because we assume delta t equals lt divided by v, and we just replace delta t with lt divided by v, and then we can write down <laughs> epsilon as, as this. Okay, and uh, then we can walk on further. And we, we know alpha t, that is the angle of attack, effective angle of attack at the elevator. So alpha t equals alpha plus eta t minus epsilon. So we can just plug in the epsilon. And then we can have further just to reorganize uh, uh, the bracket and the take out partial epsilon partial alpha, which is common towards uh, for the for the uh, turns in a bracket and then we do the reorganization again and we just replace partial alpha partial t by alpha dot this is actually what we want want to appear in the derivation right and then further we have alpha t equals this long uh, equation 
and now anyway we have the alpha dot there and let's see what happens later okay this is uh, uh, alpha t we've received from the previous slide and let's continue with the derivation and the question now is how can we uh, denote the lift on the elevator so the lift of the on the elevator can be um, written down as z equals minus at at is a slope of the lift coefficient of the elevator and the alpha t and we already have alpha t right that's the angle of attack of the elevator and then times half rho v square times st st is a area of the elevator and we just just plug in the alpha t into the z expression and we have this long equation and you may notice i highlighted the negative sign in red so why is that because um the positive z force is always pointing downward so since the lift is pointing upward so it's negative in sign remember that and then we do the derivative partial z partial alpha dot and so why it becomes co so concise and if we return to z expression because in a squ square bracket we only have alpha dot is a non-constant but the others are all constant so we can eliminate simply eliminate the other terms and they are not relevant with alpha dot okay and then we just have so concise relation for partial z partial alpha dot okay and since alpha dot is just a angular rate and if we look at the table find a denominator for non-dimensionalization the denominator is half rho v sc bar and then we just uh, do the uh, elimination we will have minus a t times s t l t divided by s c bar times partial epsilon partial alpha what is partial epsilon partial alpha and it is uh, rate of change for the downward angle with respect to the angle of attack change and finally we if we want a more uh, concise um, formula for cz alpha dot and it can be written as minus at vt bar vt bar is kind of uh, um, elevator volume and and then times partial epsilon partial alpha okay till now we finished the derivation of cz alpha dot or cz alpha, uh, cz w dot and you may wonder why we only consider the z force on the elevator not the lift because and um, the angle of attack change since we always consider small angle of attack change that won't produce many changes to the lift but since the angle, slight angle of attack change will produce some effect towards the downward angle and then downward angle change will translate to the lift force change on the elevator that's why we only consider that uh, force on the elevator not including the lift on the uh, wing okay that's uh, for the derivation in this class and in the next class we will complete the all the derivatives